Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nick Johnson. I am the team lead of Ethereum Name Service. Uh, since we received very generous grant funding from uh, Ethereum about six months ago, uh, ENS has turned from a one person's spare time project uh, into a fully funded team of nine people and we have been spending the last six months uh, building out the ENS features and functionality that we think will make ENS integral to the future of Ethereum and Web3. Uh, so today we're going to go over uh, the, the new look, uh, what we're doing about ecosystem support, uh, how we've been integrating with DNS. Uh, our new ENS management tools, and some R&D on the new registrar that will replace the current auction system. So first of all, as you've probably noticed already, uh, we have a new look, a shiny new logo and so forth. Um, this represents the fact that ENS sort of takes the sharp edges off Ethereum, and we've been rolling this out across uh, all of our applications. Uh, so. One of the main efforts that we've been engaging in in the last six months is integrating with existing DNS services. Uh, ENS, uh, when it was launched, had only the .eth top-level domain, and .eth is exclusive to Ethereum and to ENS. Uh, it works only to resolve services inside ENS and so on. Um, but we consider it to be a part of the global root, the sort of shared namespace that all DNS names exist in. Uh, and we're conscious that we want to be a a good player that we want to uh, integrate well with them, we don't want to pollute the namespace, and we also want to integrate with existing systems wherever possible. So although ENS initially launched with .eth, we're pleased to say that uh, we've already launched uh, two new top-level domains inside ENS, uh, .xyz and .lux, and these both correspond to those same top-level domains uh, in the DNS system. So uh, let's have a quick look at how we've achieved this integration. Uh, first of all, for .xyz, what we're doing is we're using DNSSEC. Uh, DNSSEC is the internet's DNSSEC is the internet's uh, system for securing domain name lookups, uh, and it permits us to actually prove the ownership of uh, DNS names and the content of DNS names. Uh, so, using that, a user is able to uh, register their domain using the uh, regular internet registrar, whatever your your favourite registrar is. Uh, they enable DNSSEC, which, depending on your registrar, may just be a one-click operation, uh, and then they add a text record under their name saying, "This is the Ethereum address. I want to be responsible for uh, this name." And then finally, they go into our tool and they submit the proof of it that's gathered from DNS that proves that they own that name and that that is the address they want it to be assigned to. And that uh, tool then sends it to a smart contract which verifies all the cryptographic proofs and submits it into ENS. And from then, they can manage that name inside ENS. So if I own myname.xyz, I can go through this process and I can end up owning myname.xyz inside ENS. And if I go to my favourite wallet, uh, I can type myname.xyz to send myself funds and so on and so forth. So this is a permissionless integration. It doesn't require uh, any cooperation or involvement from registrars or registries or ICANN because it relies entirely on public infrastructure, the uh, DNSSEC system. Um, you can uh, claim your own name now for .xyz via dnssec.ens.domains. Um, and some registrars, such as EasyDNS, uh, are already working to make this easier by doing most of the work on the back end for you. Uh, if you're a developer, there are a couple of client libraries there available. These automate the process of gathering proofs off DNS, uh, compiling them together into the data that our smart contract recognises and submitting it to it. Uh, this isn't restricted just to use with ENS either. If you have an app that needs insight into DNS, you can use this. You can use it to fetch any data from DNS that is in, uh, DNSSEC enabled and trustlessly prove its existence inside uh, Ethereum. Um, Unfortunately, of course, the, the trustless nature of this and the sort of crypto-heavy nature of it means that it can be a little less user-friendly than it might otherwise be. So the other integration we've been pursuing is uh, with .lux. And what we've been doing here is actually working directly with the .lux registry and registrars. And they've been cooperating to integrate directly with Ethereum. So rather than sort of doing it through the, the open route via uh, DNSSEC and having to do everything ourselves, this involves the registrars and the registry actually working directly with us in order to uh, support to ENS. What this means is that if you register a .lux domain uh, with a supporting registrar, you can simply go to that registrar's interface, you can uh, 
uh, go to the control panel and you can paste in the address that you want to be responsible for it inside Ethereum and hit go and that's it, it's just one step. Uh, so this we think demonstrates the sort of usability that you can get uh, and the sort of improvements in, in usability by integrating existing systems with, with Web3. Um, this is, uh, Dotlux is available now for, for pre-registration and officially launches on uh, November the 6th. Uh, and before we, before I continue, I should actually say uh, the uh, integration with DNSSEC that we've shown with uh, .xyz, we will be rolling out to a number of other top-level domains. Uh, basically, our goal is to support any top-level domain that has the necessary DNSSEC uh, tooling set up for it. Uh, and we'll be doing this after we've uh, finished the new manager and we're confident with the infrastructure and the sort of beta period that we're doing now. So and, uh, another avenue of uh, research and development has been the new .eth registrar, and this is probably what a lot of you have been waiting to hear about for the last year and a half. Uh, the initial registrar when we launched it in May 2017 was uh, auction-based, still is, uh, and it uses what's called a Vickery auction. The idea is that everyone bids on a name and then you have a reveal period, people reveal their bids, and the winner is the person who bid the most. Uh, this system works very well for allocating new names initially when you have many competing to many people competing to buy the same name, uh, but we've found it's less effective at uh, ongoing registration. What we find is most people, uh, most names only get bought by one person. There's, it, the chances of two people wanting a name within a few days of each other are quite low. So we end up with quite a lot of auction overhead for relatively little return. So our goal here is that we want to migrate to a new system. The new system will be uh, instant buy. So instead of being an auction, you just buy the domain for a fixed price. Uh, and it will be rent-based. So similar to existing uh, systems uh, with DNS, you register a name and you pay a yearly fee to rent it. Uh, before we launch this, we will have a one-off auction for shorter names. So presently, all ENS names are at least seven characters. We'll be auctioning names shorter than that on a one-off basis for a year's registration before launch, and then we'll launch the new registrar and everything will transition to this yearly rent. The yearly rent will be the same price for every domain, uh, and our goal is to set it at a price that discourages sort of mass squatting, but makes it cheap and affordable for people to use ENS. So our target price is more or less the same as you see with DNS names in the region of about 10 US dollars a year. Uh, at present, that will be set uh, by us. We've been researching mechanisms to set the rent price effectively uh, autonomously, but we've been unable to come up with one that we're confident isn't gameable by people who with sufficient resources to, to influence the price in one way or another. Uh, counterbalancing that, you can register and renew anytime you want and for as long as you want. So if you're happy with the rent price of $10 a year and you want your domain to be stable for a long time, you can register for a century and then you can say the blockchain ensures that this name will be owned by this contract for at least 100 years, which we think is pretty close to an ironclad guarantee for things like package management systems. Uh, it will also be built for uh, common infrastructure like package management systems in that it will allow people to uh, renew other domains. You can always delete your domain if you don't want it, but you, if a domain is common infrastructure, anyone should be able to sort of re-up it to ensure it continues operating. Uh, so anyone who owns a domain in the existing model will have two options uh, in the new registrar. Uh, the first option is that they can transfer their existing domain to the new registrar. Uh, they have a full year to do that, and when they do, the domain registration gets extended to a year after our, the launch of the new registrar. So you get a year's total extra registration. That costs 0.01 Ether, and the remainder of your deposit that you paid in the initial auction to register the name gets returned to you. Uh, if you don't do that within a year, the name becomes available again and people can uh, purchase the name. However, your deposit will always be returnable. The other option is that at any time after the launch of the new registrar, you can release the name and get back the entire deposit you paid in the original auction. Uh, so one of the biggest things in building ENS into a universal platform is making sure that ecosystem support is really good. ENS is not much use to us if it's just a way to register names and then a way to look at names and none of the apps support it. So one of our biggest uh, drives in the last six months has been pushing out more support 
uh, for the ecosystem uh, for libraries and tooling with ENS. And we're pleased to say that uh, ethers.js, uh, web3.js, web3py, and web3j all now have integrated ENS support, meaning that if you use any of these client libraries in your DAP, you no longer need to uh, have a separate ENS library to do name resolution. So if you are using one of these libraries, it's possible your app supports ENS without you even knowing it. Uh, and in the case of uh, Web3, uh, sorry, Ethers.js, for instance, it actually does automatic name resolution uh, anytime there is an address field. Uh, in the case of some of these other libraries, you still need to use a separate ENS module, but it's integrated with, uh, with the library for you. Uh, we've also, of course, been pushing it out to more uh, wallets and apps, and we're very grateful for the cooperation of people such as Argent, Portal Network, uh, Gitcoin especially, have been doing a lot of integration with us, uh, and Melonport. And this is going to be uh, one of our main efforts going forward, is more developer relations, more reaching out to folks like you to make sure that integrating ENS is the obvious choice. Uh, finally, uh, outreach such as events like this. Uh, we held a second ENS workshop in August uh, in, at which we gathered a lot of feedback and ideas that have helped us improve the permanent registrar and other efforts. Uh, we had on, have onboarding workshops here at DevCon. There's one today at 5 p.m. if you, you just want to sign up for a name. Uh, and Thursday at 10 a.m. there is a workshop for anyone building a DAP or a wallet who wants to know how to integrate ENS better and would love to see you there. Uh, and we've done talks at a wide variety of events with uh, ENS staff members. And uh, if any of you would have an event that you'd like to see us at, please come talk to us afterwards. We'd love to be there. Uh, so next up, uh, we have been redesigning the interface for managing uh, ENS names and uh, registrations. And to demo that, I'd like to invite Jeff Lau, the lead of the ENS project, uh, uh, manager project up. Oh. Hi everyone, um, I'm Jeff Lau and I'm the lead developer of the ENS DAP. Um, I've been working with ENS since June of 2017, building the uh, original managed DAP, which um, following the launch of ENS last year. Uh, this was built as a proof of concept um, for this new DAP that I'm going to show you right now, and it was concentrated on functionality. But uh, with the new funding we got from the Ethereum Foundation earlier this year, we have managed to hire a UX designer and a UI designer to help us revamp the interface. So we're, we're focusing on it to be more user-friendly, and this is what the uh, revamp I'm going to show you today is based on. So today I'm going to show you a demo of the new app. I'm going to show you how to set up your ENS name if you have one from start to finish. And I'm also going to show you how to add subdomains. So this is the, the new app right now. So you're greeted by a large search bar, similar that you'd see on GoDaddy or any of your other registrars. Um, and here you can be nosy and search any ENS name in the registry. Um, so, however, the most useful thing you can do is search for names that you own, and you can set them up for your own use. So I'm going to do that right now, and I'm going to search for truenames.eth, which is the uh, ENS name for the company that uh, develops ENS. So as you can see here, um, I'm going to show you there are two stages for setting up your ENS name. So first, we need to set up an ENS resolver for our name, and secondly, we need to set up the address record for that resolver. So what is a resolver and how do we set it up? Well, a resolver is a smart contract that allows you to map your ENS name to a record. The most important record that you can set up is the address, so you can resolve from truenames.eth to your unreadable um, Ethereum address. So how do we set up a resolver? Well, the easiest way is to use the public resolver. There is, the ENS has deployed a public resolver contract, which um, is available for everyone to use, and it will handle most of the um, record types that 99.9% .9 of users will need. If you have some advanced usage, you can also deploy your own resolver um, and point to that instead, but we're just going to use the public resolver. So if I click on the pencil tool, it will, you'll come up with a nice um, input box to type any resolver you like, but we're just going to click on Use Public Resolver, which will pre-populate this with the um, public resolver. So I'm going to click Save and run MetaMask. And uh, we've cheated a little bit here. We're, we're on a private network, so this is going to confirm immediately. And it's going to 
yeah, I really wish Ethereum was that fast, but uh, just for the demo today, we're going to use a private network. Um, so that's the resolver set up. That means we're now to add, our, uh, we are able to add our own record types. So we've got this nice little plus here to add our own record. Clicking the plus, we can see a drop down menu that will allow us to choose a record. Um, currently, we only have address and content, um, but in the future, we'd like to add new, uh, add the rest of the record types that the public resolver supports. So we're just going to click address here, and we're just going to copy the owner address, which is our own address. So we want to point true names or ETH to our own ETH address. So I'm going to click save again and confirm, and that's going to confirm instantly again. And now we've set up our name. So that's actually it. That's um, how you would set up your ENS name uh, once you've bought it. You set up the resolver, you set up the address, and now any ENS, um, any ENS enabled DAP will be able to resolve true names or ETH to 0x, 9, O, F, etc. So that's the basics. Um, now I'm going to show you how to set up subdomains. So subdomains are an advanced feature that allow you to set up more ENS names under your root name. So if I click on the uh, subdomains tab on this side, uh, it's going to show us what subdomains we have available. Um, we don't have any subdomains in this right now, so I'm going to set one up. Um, so if I click on the button here, you can add any kind of label for your subdomain. So we're just going to create a tip jar for truenames.eth. So any of you kind folks who want to donate to our Fernate Foundation can do so. <laughs> so I'm going to save that. MetaMask again. Super fast Ethereum. We're in. Subdomain created. And I'm going to click on this now to go into our tip jar.truenames.eth. So as you can see here, um, the tip jar subdomain is just like any other ENS name. It has all the functionality of truenames.eth and um, has the owner, it has the resolver, and it also has all the record fields available to it. So I could do the same thing as we did before. I could set up the public resolver, save that, um, confirm it, et cetera, and that's all set up nice and quickly. Um, the other thing we can do is change the owner. So your subdomains don't have to be the same owner as the root domain. Um, so we can actually transfer this to, say, a family member or maybe for us, maybe like a multi-sig wallet for the truenames.eth foundation. So I'm going to show you that now. I'm just going to copy a address I saved earlier. Might be my own address. Uh, and uh, paste that in there. Click transfer. Confirm that transaction, as you can see. And that changes the owner address to the one I just pasted. So that's pretty much it for the basics of the ENS manager. Um, we also have added in some new functionality for favoriting. So if I click on this heart button, um, that will fill it up. And I can go to the favorites panel. And that shows you um, we've got favoriting abilities to save to local storage your domain. So this makes it easier for you if you've owned quite a few domains to, to manage them all separately. Um, and I can get rid of that heart, and it will get rid of my favorite. Um, so that's all the functionality for the new ENS DAP. There's a lot of things that we want to add to this. Um, let me go back to the presentation. So um, present. Um, so in the future, we want to add things like uh, reverse record support, which will bring up, up to feature parity with the old manager. We want to be able to, like Nick said, claim DNS names via DNSSEC, have that integrated into the DAP. Um, auctions for short names, three to six characters. Um, permanent registrar support, so the instant buy. ENS now, which is already hosted at now.ens.domains, but we want to integrate it with the original app. And also advanced features like name and resolver history. And I'm just going to hand it back to Nick to uh, finish off the rest of the presentation. Yeah. So finally, to wrap up, uh, what's next for ENS? Uh, obviously, we need uh, our top priority. We want to finish uh, permanent registrar design and implementation. Uh, our goal is still to get this rolled out in uh, May next year so that everyone can transition to a more permanent model for registration and so that we can ease the registration process for new users. Uh, we want to, of course, deploy this and migrate everyone over. Um, we're completing work on the new management interface that Jeff just showed us. And of course, there's the ongoing outreach. Our uh, biggest ongoing task is always going to be making sure that uh, ENS is as widely deployed as possible, it's as useful as possible, and convincing as many of you fine folks as possible to integrate it into your apps. So that's it for today. Thank you very much.